to um, have a legal review because I think we don't need that anymore. Okay, um, let's put that under other business terms, terms okay. of office, legal review. Okay. I mean, uh, yes, good. Um, and this opening of the meeting, I'm opening the annual meeting as well as whatever other business comes before the board. And welcome all the public that's here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, if no other additions to the agenda, it'll be approved by unanimous consent. Uh, public comments? Stephen or others? Stephen has public comments. Or Steve, hold on. Can everybody hear Steve okay? I can. Nobody can. Nobody can? Uh, Kim said he could or couldn't or could? Could not. Could not. I mean, everybody needs right, to let's try it. Hold on. Let's try it this way. Steve, try again. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is, I hope folks read what I sent this morning um, as background, but I'm concerned that we're uh, moving, one, we don't have a, uh, an audit. Uh, this The charter requires a public hearing before the annual meeting. We haven't done that. Uh, there's an annual audit required and I verified today that the city auditor, the audit that's managed for the city does not audit CVPSA, so it doesn't count uh, as a unified audit. Um, and then I'm concerned that this uh, annual report came out at just a few minutes ago, or I found it in my email a few minutes ago. And it again presumes Televate is the automatically shoe in for the next phase of the work. And it assumes the core group is going to operate without uh, the imprimatur of this board being granted and or clarification on open meeting law applying to that. So I, I'm pointing out that this body cannot abdicate its responsibilities under its charter. It can't delegate them to another body uh, that are not members of this group. Um, so I'm just raising process issues that are uh, seem to be recurring. Uh, so I would ask you to read what I sent earlier in the day and then uh, take action accordingly. Thanks. Okay. And uh, thank you for those comments. And I want to make sure people realize I am going to try to make sure that people try to be brief. We went way over last time. And I know there's a lot to say, but if we could try to stick with that intentional, you know, two minutes when we're speaking, um, two, three on a topic within the board, and then not speak again until everyone gets a chance to speak, that would be really important. Let's, Try to try to be focused, and um, that would be helpful. So the next thing on the uh, agenda is to approve the minutes, the September 9th minutes. Entertain a motion to approve September December <laughs> December 9th minutes. I'll move approval. Second. I'll second. Okay, comments. All in favor, raise your hand or say yes. Any opposition? Okay, passes. Thank you. I would like to announce before we go further uh, for everyone listening that uh, Paul Sharon from the Barry appointed board member has resigned effective now. And so our, our board is a member of eight and hence a quorum is still five. Review the proposed budget. I did send that out um, with, a, with the 30,000. That was the motion that was made last meeting with Doug. And I just put that 30,000 under consultant.
actually I put a little extra because with the with the actual budget, you're supposed to have a zero balance. So uh, we had talked about 30,000 there, we would have had $3,000 balance, but I just put it all under consultants so that the budget would balance. You want me to go line item by line item on the FY23 budget? I certainly can. The only thing changed is the consultant line. Don, in interest of time, I would move approval. Okay. Um, and that's a, uh, okay, second. No, oh, is this the budget approval? Uh, yeah, this is the budget for that it, that was sent out that included the change of the motion yeah. made for the 30. Yes, budget approval. Well, I'm just wondering if this is the actual vote on the budget or if we're going to discuss it a little more. Well, well if we had a motion, then we would discuss it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I guess I'm very much not familiar with the uh, procedural quirks and, uh, and okay. rules. G generally speaking, you don't always do it, but you get a motion on the floor and then you discuss it. If, if a motion doesn't have enough strength to get a second, then why discuss it? But we do right. plenty of discussion without a motion. So it, it can happen either way. Since Doug put a motion on the floor, because uh, I asked for it, then if you just do a second and then we can right. sweep I'll it second. aside if we don't want to do it. My reason for doing it was to generate the discussion. If nobody wants okay. to talk about it, it's okay with me. I would like to talk about it. I will second. Okay. Doug made the motion. Justin second. A discussion. Justin, what would you like to say? So Question. I guess I'm... I just have like a real high level question today, having let, having read everything that was sent by the city managers and then um, having really read all the correspondence, I've read everything I feel like I can for this. Um, it seems like, like we, it, what's, what's the goal here? Like, cause it's not, so it seems like the twin cities are going on their own for getting the consoles. Like that seemed to be pretty clear from the city managers, right? That they're yep, going to yes. go. We knew that before. Yes. Yep. And so they, so is our goal, our goal here is to, I mean, ultimately, is it to get the funding to create the infrastructure or is our goal ultimately to govern? Like, is the CVPSA supposed to govern? I guess, like, I don't, I don't really see the role of the, the committee as this thing moves forward. And that, that will inform, I think, like what we do with the budget. Like, do we see ourselves doing all the legwork to get this infrastructure in place? If the answer is no, then I don't think we need any money. If the answer is yes, then we need a lot of money. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, one of the steps, and I see your hand, Kim. Uh, one of the steps is to think that we would move forward and work with Montpelier and Capital Far to move with their radios and simulcasts, trying to get that funding in place and help them work with their select boards. We knew that the cities had already told us they were gonna take the consoles out of the, the big picture and just work on it themselves. So that's great. Um, but in the letter, we heard that Barry wasn't interested in working with the Capital FAR on the radios and consoles. At least that's what I got out of it. Any other comment about that as far as the letter, the city's letter? Um, Stephen wants to know if he can comment. Okay, not, uh, Kim was, had his hand up, although he took it down. Do you wanna talk, Kim? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I'm not prepared to vote to have Televate um, do anything at this point. This is nothing about Televate in this budget, nothing. Well, your, your agenda, if the, if the only vote is to appropriate uh, a budget of 35 and 50 to, to do the basic outline, that's one thing. But I asked you, if, if you had any uh, 
information from Telebate as to what they intended to do with this 35,000. Uh, I'm not, I don't attach this budget to Televate. When Doug made the motion for the $30,000, it was to keep us alive. And there was well, no decision made on consultant or what the range would be. Uh, we were waiting on hearing from the cities. So now we've heard from the cities and we know who our partners are. So, Barry has stepped out. They don't so, want any assistance. So at a future meeting, we will decide if this budget were approved, I think we'd want a, uh, an RFP as we have for every major expenditure. Okay, this budget is a work in, in progress. And I went over the charter with the Vermont League lawyer. They got our charter online and read step-by-step step the requirements for the annual meeting, quote, the public meeting that's supposed to happen before February 1. And they felt we were in line. We do the annual meeting, we propose a budget, and then we go to January 13th, and we then have a final say. And at that point, we commit ourselves whether we put something on the town ballots or not. And that's January 13th at our regular January meeting. And that has been posted as not only a regular meeting, but a public hearing about the budget. My question is, when do we decide how we're gonna spend the money? I think we can use 35,000 in planning and all the various things that you mentioned, but I'm not at all convinced that the board has approved how that would be done. No, it and hasn't. So it hasn't. When, when, and, when will that happen? Well, we tried to have a discussion last meeting and that's why with the proposed budget I put in, it had 50,000 which was what the rough numbers were from Televate, just if we were going to move ahead and, and not only do the governance and cost allocation and funding strategy, but also starting to look at an RFP, then those were the numbers. And that's why I put that there because I tried to say it verbally December 9th, but I felt it got lost. So I just put that as a sub branch that this is the information I have from Rick. And okay. in the first one, he has a 35,000. His, his only draft to me is about governance for that 35. But he said he could eventually rework it if we were really serious about it. And he, you know, likewise, the 50 for the RFP, he put base outline in our, in his report, his August report about what they would do as far as them administratively, but he's not willing to do another proposal until we are sure it's what we want and we have clear guidelines for him. Well, I just want to be clear that the board, even if, uh, I think the board can readily spend the, the money that's listed in the agenda uh, for working on the, the items listed there. But until we have a proposition as to how that money is going to be spent and who our consultants will be, um, if it's just a raw number, I can support it. But I can't support it if until we have a full chance of how the money would be spent. And I think we might want to send out an RFP to people to provide those services. Fikes, that's what I would want to do. Well, it's usually you get the RFP uh, when after you get your money. Right now, you know, we have that $40,000, five of which, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so. Um, well, if the answer is yes, we get the money voted and then we'll do an RFP, then I'm gonna support the budget. Well, the budget as it stands right now with what the board approved on the 9th was just $30,000. Okay, well, and our is... balance is another $30,000 that gives us 60, 63 for a consultant. And that's what you'll see if you look at the, at the two budgets. 
Well, I see 35 and 50, which is in your agenda. And if that's the motion, then I will support it. Okay. Um, can you see this? No, I probably can't get it right. The uh, budget you're looking at, does it have an FY23 number one and FY23 number two? I'm looking at what's on the agenda. Oh, okay, okay. Well, um, what I expect is what we're being asked to approve. Uh, I think you, I think you're talking about. You're both talking about two different things. One of them is the spreadsheet that's got budget budgetary information, and the other item is what's in the in the in the. The minutes, no, no, the agenda. Well, the first thing in the agenda is the FY 22, 23, 24 budgets, and that was attached. Yes. And that's the, and that's the item that's been made a motion and seconded. And that's taking an additional 30 that Doug proposed we put on the town ballot at our last meeting and the 30 of our balance. And, and it makes the consultant, if you used every penny, 63,500. And that would theoretically, if, if. Approved. But we're not approving which consultant or what they're gonna do. No, absolutely not yet, it's too early. Well, we won't know. We won't know what we got until after March, town meeting day. It's, it's just like when we put the money on for phase one, Kim. We put the money out there, and then we went and got the consultant. And it might not be Televate, but I'm just, okay. I use that as the information I had. Fair enough. Do you have any belief that we could get a, a full study? I don't know what to call it, but an assessment for an RFP for $50,000. Well, well, more concerned than that, I want to backpedal. I didn't even think we can get $30,000 passed on the ballots. So to me, that's what we're talking about is what we need, what we want to really do, what can the voters tolerate, and what can we do when Barry has more or less said they don't really want to go to the next stage with us. Well, I think we could put on the ballot 25 from each city, roughly, because that's what's going to be needed to do an RFP. Um, now, I've said before, I have a problem with the two cities paying for all the planning for the towns. And I think that's something that needs to be discussed with our partners and work out how this is going to happen. And we don't have to spend the money all at once. But even Televate has said before they could do an RFP, and the cities will benefit to some degree from that because there is work on the towers and there's work on in-building connections. Oh, and so frankly, oh, so it they have a lot of benefit in it. So we need to meet with everybody, figure out what's needed and do an RFP and we should have the money to do it. And I don't think 30,000 will do it. You can make an amendment to the motion. We tried 50 and it didn't float. Well, we didn't Last have much meeting. Of risk. Well, I'll, if that would help, I'll move that we, uh, increase the, the ballot amount to 50 in... We're talking about the budget, the budget amount. The budget amount. I well, just ask a quick question about that before this comes up for a vote. Uh, oh, we, we have a discussion of an amendment. Yes, yes. And whether or not sure. it's a second. Can, yes. Can we give the money back if we don't use it? Like, let's just suppose we get 50,000. 
And for some reason, this whole thing goes to shit and it all falls apart. Can we give it back? Yes, sure, we you can. can. You can always okay. give money back. I know that's like a really question, We can give money knows? back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as we can charge interest. <laughs> the money Jesus is paid. always running. Um, the money we, is paid uh, Steve quarterly. also has his public comments. If, if you want to recognize him at some point, he's still waiting on his public comment. The money would be paid quarterly, so... Um, so, Kim, you made an amendment to the motion. Then I want to, I want to add fifty thousand under consultant mm -hmm. instead of thirty. Yes. And for Excuse right me. now, the only taxing we have are the two cities. Correct. Now, okay. And I think Justin raises a good point. We can always turn it off. We haven't had a good discussion about how we can use all this money, and I want to do that. Okay, Doug. Uh, are we? When I made the motion, the original motion, I was doing it on the basis of item number four on the agenda, and all that is is a thirty thousand dollar ballot request revision. Are we still on that? Okay. Are you looking at December 20th? The fourth item is review proposed three-year budget. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. And goals for 2022. Yeah. Yes. That's where we're at. The budget item, which has 30,000 that we added. We revised the 50 to 30 for the motion that happened last meeting. Yeah. So, is Kim suggesting that that thirty thousand be replaced with fifty thousand? Right. Yes. I had proposed fifty thousand the last meeting, and that didn't fly. The motion was made for thirty. Kim tried to make an amendment at last meeting, and it didn't pass. So here we are again. Yep. Is it, are we still in a discussion stage, or where are we at? Yes, we are. Uh, anyone else for the amendment? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a second down for the amendment. Justin, was that you? I, the amendment was Kim. I will second the amendment to 50,000. Okay. And then Steve's got his public comment. Okay, well, but he, he doesn't. Go, go no, ahead, Doug. I'm going to talk first before he. Before he yes. Uh, the reason we went to 30 was we had a collective belief that 50 would not fly so i guess i have to ask myself and others what has changed since the ninth knowing all the stuff that has been sent out and all the articles in the newspaper that fifty thousand is going to pass muster well for one thing, we got an opinion from- Excuse me, Kim, would you please put your hand up? I just want to try to keep okay. order. If I'm going to ask Steve to have permission, I need to have everybody else come through the okay. chair, please. Okay, I'll put my hand up. Thank you. Go ahead, Kim. Am I on? Yes. The board has precedent. We've got to get our discussion done. Then we can take public comment. Go ahead. Okay. I've seen an opinion from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns that says ARPA money can be spent for public communications. In reading the newspaper, um, neither Barry nor Montpelier have factored any ARPA money into their budgets and what they can do so that there's That's plainly, particularly with Justin's suggestion, that we, we are going to need, no matter how you do this, to get a grant for anybody, we're going to need to have a good RFP, and, and it's going to cost money to do that. And nobody is going to benefit if we don't do a good job and get everything figured out. And I just don't see how we can do that on $30,000. Okay. Um, Sally, as a board member, would you like to participate? 
Any comments? Capital far, <laughs> I know. It just, yeah. there's, there's no money in the till. I got it. Yeah, there. I mean, and I don't, I don't see us continuing um, if we end up putting money into this. I think people's feeling is that if every money, every penny that we have, we want to put towards our project that we're trying to get moving forward on that we've been working on for 10 years. I'm not speaking for the whole capital fire, but I think that's probably going to be the, the general thought. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Stephen, please limit your comments at two minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, point of order, this uh, apparently the recording is not working and uh, we I'd suggest we stop pause the meeting until we get it working. Uh, I've never heard any re uh, message this meeting is being recorded. We uh, talked earlier and I asked Orca and they said they were recording. They, they planned to, but there's no indication on screen which should be there that the meeting is being recorded. And and okay. because I don't have speakers here, I can't set my own recorder out and make sure this important conversation is captured for the record. Well, you set your little recorder out when you're There's using no my speakers speaker. here. There is no speakers here. J oh, I can take it. I'm happy to take it out of the ear so Steve can record that way. Or I can click record on my side. I just didn't want to click record without permission. I don't think you have to. I yeah. Um, I mean, I can email them, but unfortunately, I don't have a... Uh, a number to text him or call him. Uh, Orca, who's, see, they probably said it on automatic. Orca? It's it's not recording. So we need to pause and get that figured out. Steve, why don't you put your speaker on? That recording speaker. in progress. I can do this. I can do it on mine from this point on. Okay. It's working. It's working. There it, you go. Okay, now it is. So everybody wants to repeat everything they said already? No. Uh, no, we'll just have to do with our minutes. Is Brent here? Brent. Yeah. Is Brent I don't see Brent. All this? No, Brent's not here. So how's how's anybody gonna I'm taking notes? I've tried to get a temporary no, secretary this, and nobody volunteered. So um I right. object this. Uh I object wholeheartedly. You can't chair a meeting and be secretary and with no recording going. This is we we need to revisit the things that have Sorry. already been addressed. Okay, Steve, you've said your statement. Please. Anything well, else that, related yes, to the I, topics that we were discussing? Yes, because, okay. Uh, the budget the answers we were talking that you, about. That's what you raised your hand can for. Can you hear me? Budget. Yes. Okay. The uh, statements in the, what's called the annual report that I just got a few minutes ago, uh, the last two paragraphs above the board of directors directly conflict with what you how you just answered, Kim, about having this wired for Televate, that we're gonna use Televate and the core group and Televate's gonna do this and Televate's gonna do that. Similarly, under item four of the agenda, it says that Televate's gonna do the governance in phase two. And Televate has no experience in New England governance. So- We're talking I, I, about I have, the budget. Do you have any comments about the budget? Yes. The budget, I, I want to make explicitly clear that item four does not include the three lines below in item four. Okay. And secondly, you're going to need more than that to put an RFP out. A system design is the next step. And the system design is going to cost over 50000 itself. So when you describe budget as a hard word, that is limited to the what we ask of the towns, that's a flawed way to go about this. We need to craft a budget that allows the towns to be part of it, but allows us to still go out and solicit funds from served municipalities. Okay. It's gonna take $100,000. Sum it up. Yeah, it's... Okay. And then I, uh, I hear Donna, you. I have a... I'm yes, sorry, I have a response to Doug's question also about the budget. I guess, Doug, the, the answer that I would have is just like, a, for me, like if we're not going to get what we need, then I just don't think we should get anything. I guess that's just like my answer. But maybe 30 is useful. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I'm totally willing to admit that 30 could be useful for us. I just, uh, like if 30 isn't going to be useful, I'm kind of like, oh, then I don't really care to get anything then. That, well, that, that's Justin, that's how I felt. 
I, I yeah. presented a budget last time with one with 50,000, 50, at least that would get us phase two and one with nothing and just using our reserve. And then going into next year to see if we really had partners. But right now I see Capital West totally understanding their finances that they don't want to be part of us if they're being asked to, to contribute money. So they're, we're, we're saying then that Capital Far isn't going to go with us to the town select boards. We'd be going to the town select boards by ourselves for money to an organization that they're only a group of through Capital Far. So I feel like it's a total regrouping and assessment that we did the Televate report. We got great regional support. But the reality came when we asked for people to make a firm commitment for the next phase, they're not ready to do it. So I don't want to, I don't want any more town money. I wouldn't put anything on the ballot, but the, but I gave the board two choices. And last week, last month, they said no to the 50 and they supported Doug's 30. So that's what's on this proposal. Okay. Now we have an amendment on the floor. Kim, is your statement about the amendment very concise, something we have not heard? Otherwise, we're going to go to a motion. I think if we don't have at least 50, we might as well fold up CVPSA and be done with it. Okay, so we have an amendment on the table for 50, to amend the budget to, for $50,000 with the assumption that we would be asking Barry and Montpelier to have that on their ballots. Twenty-six fifty for Barry, and twenty-three fifty of uh, twenty-three five hundred for Montpelier. Okay, all in favor of the amendment for fifty thousand dollars, say aye. 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 No. Okay, so roll call. Okay, uh, Justin was no. No, no, Justin is an I. Justin oh, is I'm a sorry. It's a good thing I said that out loud. I wrote yeah. yes and said. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kim, your vote, please. Yes. Uh, Doug? Sorry, I've got to ask a question again. Is this for the budget or is this for the ballot item? The budget. The budget. It's but if you the, put it, it's, it's the, the budget. Ballot. Okay. $50,000. Wait, I'm confused. Um, it's one and the same, right? No, it is. Well, when I put it in the budget, I put it by the towns because that's our source of money. So if, 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 but Doug's point is maybe he wants to support $50,000 and then think about where it comes from. I don't know, Doug, what's behind it? I understand. Well, uh, I'm just trying to get it clear in my feeble brain. I see 50000 in the budget, but I only see 30,000 on the ballot item. And I thought we were talking about the ballot item. I, no, number four doesn't have the ballot item there at all. Other than, than in the budget, the money is distributed by the cost allocation with Barry and Montpelier. So when you look at the budget, that 50,000, 30,000, it's distributed between Barry and Montpelier. Yeah, I see that. And the assumption is if you're putting it there that you're gonna go in that city's ballot to do it. But the vote right now is just about the, ballot, the budget. Donna, how, Donna, how do you, maybe, maybe we can't talk, but. How do you get to the $50,000 and not include the ballot? Item? In the past, we would put it in the budget, make the cost allocation formula, distribute it in the budget by town with the assumption that if we're having a certain amount of money from Barry and a certain amount of money from Montpelier, the assumption is it's they are done by ballot. So if you're putting $50,000 in the budget, just tell me where you want to put it if it's not by town.
I don't know. Oh. I guess. Nothing. Donna, we have an additional 30,000 left over, right? So the actual budget is going to be closer to 80 if we get this 50, right? Well, that's, that's, that's the expense side, not the revenue side. The revenue okay. side has a carryover of $40,000 expected. Mm -hmm. Five is for our administration, and there's some 30, 35 for a consultant. Because our administration has gone up to more like 6,000 with the additional known cost. Anyway, I, I'm sorry the ballot, I mean, you can put $50,000 in your budget and then decide to do something else with your ballot item, but then you'd ultimately have to change your budget to reflect it. All right. I'm sorry the question came up during the middle of the uh, vote. Uh, you're doing your roll call. Yes, you wanna... Doug, you're next. A vote yes. Sally? I'll vote yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna vote no. I'm sorry, but it passes. It's just like okay, passes four to one. Hey, thank you. Now, um, I don't I don't know when you have just a quorum if you can pass something four to one. I know the council has a certain number we have to have. I'll check that, but for right now it passes. Oh, Will, Will's there, okay. Will, would you like to be <laughs> filled in and vote on this item? Yeah, so I, I think I caught the tail end of this, so I vote yes. Okay. That's $50,000 to go back in our budget, all right. So now we go back to Doug's motion that has been amended to read that we'll put $50,000 in the budget for FY23 with the assumption it's gonna go in town ballots. Something that's favor. gonna go where? This. $50,000 in our budget. Yes. There's no assumptions about it. Once it happens, if it's voted in, that's where it comes from. Well, that's right. <laughs> but people don't seem to get it. Okay. Uh, the motion for $50,000, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. So it's going to be the same as before. It's going to be everybody. Oh, no, no, no. I'm voting no. Doug, I'm it's a roll call because I'm no. Okay. Uh, Doug's no, Donna's no. Uh, Justin? Yes. Yes. Kim? Yes. Yes. Sally? So this is for the whole budget, not just that item. This is, no, this is adding our, um, changing our, budget to reflect $50,000 divided between Barry and Montpelier. I, I, I want to abstain, I think, because we're not putting any money into it. So I guess I feel kind of awkward voting on something that we're not contributing to, which I don't think that we, sh we have the money to do that. But I guess that's my opinion on it. Right. Well, if it were your money, would you want $50,000 in the budget this year? I mean, I think to do what you want to do, but I don't know that you're going to get that approved. I'm going to abstain. Well, none of us know. None of us know. It's all what we're going to aim to do. You know, we'll get out there and we'll promote it if the board passes it. Anybody want to talk to Sally's concerns? I mean, you're a board member, whether it's from your town or not, you get a vote. So you want to abstain? Okay, Will? Yes, I'm going to abstain. Yep.
I think Sally's making a good decision. Well, Absolutely. I feel I I feel the same as Sally does because you know Capital Fire is not putting anything into this. But I mean, if if CVPSA is going to continue to function, we've agreed to join that. At, you know, that's where the funding's coming from right now, unless there's a different proposal that the fifty thousand dollars gets uh, some a portion of that somehow gets. Uh, uh, parsed off to capital fire mutual aid. I, I don't know how Sally and I can vote on things like this, if especially when it comes to financial stuff. If we if we're not a contributing factor to that, I understand your and her quantum, but you do have the authority to vote on it. That doesn't mean me, but you can abstain if you'd wish. It's your choice. This motion started out with 30,000 and it became 50,000. I don't know if that would make any difference in your mind. I think I have to abstain like Sally did. Okay, so we have six. We have two no's, two yeses, two abstaining. The motion doesn't carry. Yeah, me too. Uh, somebody's talking. Kim, is that in your house? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Households are quiet until you get on Zoom. <laughs> um, so now we have the, the budget here without any motion. Does somebody want to make a motion? Doug, you're muted. I need to clarify a couple things in my mind, and I'm sorry I'm being really kind of hard-headed about this. To my way of thinking, setting up the budget for fiscal year 24, we can put any number in there that we decide to put in there. That number should not be contingent on what happens at the ballot box on March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, wherever it is. You understand what I'm saying? There well, just generally, if you put a number in your budget, you have an idea where it's coming from. So if you put okay. $50,000 there, where does it come from? All right, but if we put, if we let's assume for a moment that we're lucky in the vote passes on 30,000. You've got 40,000 fund balance or parts thereof that could move over into 24 and give you whatever to use for your budget in fiscal year 24. Who knows, between now and then, Sally and Will may get together and talk with the folks at Capital Fire and they may come up with some money. We would then put it into the budget as revenue. But I mean, it's kind of like we have need to have a discussion about the ballot item in terms of whether it's going to be able to pass or not. I think there was some agreement at some point that fifty thousand would not do it. Thirty thousand might. So why do we want to cut off one of our legs to get X amount of dollars by setting up a situation where you've got to go for a ballot item of $50,000? I, I, I do not understand that. So are you going to make a motion for a lower number? No. Okay. No. We, we do have to have a number in place by January 13th of what's going to go on the ballot. So by Kim, I'm hearing people again. Um, so by January 13th, we need to have a number if we're going to put anything on any city ballot. So you can do whatever you want with our budget, but come January 13th, we have to know what our numbers are to put on the ballot. And generally speaking, that is tied back to our budget. And that's what our 
members, remember we're all here representing our members, would look at to say, what are they going to do with the money? Here's the revenue coming in. Here's the consultant work coming out. And that's why I sent a sample of the warning to give an idea of the verbiage as I understood it about moving ahead on our next phase for study. Donna, can, can I ask Doug a quick question? Yes, go ahead. Doug, is your sense that we're, we can find the money elsewhere? Is that basically your point here that we should set our budget aspirationally and then get whatever we can from the cities and then maybe we can get money from elsewhere? I'm not, I'm just, I'm very ignorant about this. So I have no idea if there is money from elsewhere. You won't know until you go look. And I well, I think this is a, can I speak? This chair. Uh, just a moment. Uh, are you done, Justin? Okay. Yes, Kim. I think we're in a very fluid position here. There's a lot of money um, in grants that is coming. Um, from whom and how, I think is fairly complicated. And I would say to Sally and Will, I think there are ways that the towns can get what they want if we all work together, but we haven't had a serious discussion about how that would happen. Basically, if the towns want to join CBPSA, <laughs> yeah. that would have to be approved by your select boards and, and the voters. But then you could vote on the ballot but we'd have to have a, uh, a whole rejiggering of virtually everything that happens with CBPSA because all the towns would have to consult with whatever we do. But we I, have- I'm sorry, even... Kim, that's a little out of order and we, we're already 749. Um, well, that's Donna, for, if, we, if we, you want to yeah. kill CBPSA, keep it up, but I don't. No, I mean, that's the talking to the towns is a great discussion. But right now, the only people we can have on our ballot on their ballots come March is Barry and Montpelier. That's true. So that's what's on the table. I'm sorry to rein you in, but it's time. I feel we need to focus. So right now we have no motion on the table. The last two didn't pass. Which means last it's, one, last one didn't pass. So there's no, we're not going to approve a budget. I, I pleasure of the board. Right. And again, it's uh, this is a the budget that is before you that was passed on December 9th stands until it's changed, and that's with thirty thousand dollars in it. So that's fine. Well, it can be brought up again on January 13th. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a final review. Donna? Doug? Donna, the spreadsheet is the budget, and you mentioned that the 30000 is in there. I forgive the, forgive me, but I don't see it. I don't see the 30,000 in there. Okay, uh, Barry has 15,900. Montpelier has 14,100. That's the 30,000 divided by their percentages as is our current cost allocation. Those two figures are 30,000 and represent what would be, what would be on the ballot. Yes. Okay. And that passed in the December 9th meeting. Okay. All right, we've got motions that have failed, correct? Yes, so right now that- We're looking for a new motion. The, not necessarily, the proposed budget from not December 9th is has the $30,000 in it. 
And if nobody wants to change that, then that's how it stays. If you want to change it, then we need a motion. No, I was going to make a motion to accept the budget as mailed out. Okay, it, well, this one's already been approved, so. Okay. All right, it's just confirming yeah. the things that happened at the ninth meeting. Right. And every time we have, so that was bringing it into the annual meeting. Then at the public hearing on the 13th, we'll have another final say, receive comments in between now and then. And that's our final opportunity to make any revisions is on the 13th. Okay. Okay. And then I wanted to discuss options for the March 22nd town meeting ballot. And I, I passed out the, uh, or distributed the warning sample. So that you see that in our warning, we mention uh, to elect one at large board member and that I put the 30,000 in there and showed how it was split. And I, this is the wording that we used last year and mirrors close to the ones we've used before. John Odom did some tweaking. So I, I sort of wanted to stay in that same pattern. This would need to, this warning, what right now has the 30,000 in it. If that changes and the warning has to change, but I as chair and Brent householder as board secretary needs to sign it. And then we need to file it with both city clerks, Barry and Montpelier. So I just wanted to give you an idea that we're also advertising and warning for the at-large board member slot. And now there's gonna be two. Yes? I'm sorry. Oh. Right now there's just uh, one, Kim's slot is up. At-large is every three years, whereas appointed is every two years. So, I guess you know, I, was, I was thinking of Bear, the Barry rep who just resigned. He's an appointment. Yeah, he's an appointment. Right now, the at large uh, is Kim, myself, and Brent Householder. Everyone else is appointed. There, there might be more uh, at large. Hey, Donna, does yes. my term expire? Does my term expire in March? I'm just wondering if I need to. Um, Yes, it does, because you okay. filled Dan's slot, and Dan okay. had the slot that ends on the even years. Okay. Well, Odd years. Even years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because his it's March 2022 is when you end even years. And actually, the board, board terms are at the end of the uh, annual report. Okay. Public records request. All right. So, let's see. Do, 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 do. I have to find my little sheet here. I'll tell you the papers and emails are flying. I can't keep up with it, be truthful. Uh, there we go. Sorry, it's in the stack. So one uh, violation was the May 17th open meeting law violation that Steve felt that our gathering at Sarducci's was a violation because there was uh, on the 17th a quorum. There was enough number there to be a quorum and that we were gathering with the consultant from public safety and he felt it should have been a worn posted meeting with minutes. The board has two options. It could decide that the May 17th was an invert error and the cure would be to treat all such social gatherings as a board meeting in the future. Or it could decide to use the part of the open meeting law that says a meeting shall not mean occasions. Uh, Kim, your people are talking again. Sorry, would you mute? 
Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't have no, any way other to tell you. Um, meetings shall mean okay, not mean occasions when a quorum of the public body attends social gatherings, conventions, conferences, training programs, press release conferences, media events, or otherwise gather, provided that the public body does not discuss specific business of the public body that at the time of the exchange, the participants expect to be the business of the public meeting at a later date. What is the board's pleasure? What's the remedy yeah. here? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I, Justin, I go ahead. I, I didn't see your hand. Sorry. Um, what's the remedy here if we say it was an open meeting violation? We just acknowledge it and move on? Well, no, uh, that's what I read. In the that, future? Well, no, I no, heard, no, yeah, he's... that like all social gatherings, et cetera, et cetera. That we know there's going to be a quorum, then we treat yeah. it like a board meeting in the future. So anytime we think, oh, we're all going to go to the 4th of July picnic and be at the float, mm -hmm. probably you don't have to do that one because you're walking on the street. But if we have a, a social gathering, another social gathering at a restaurant, uh, then we would post it like a meeting. We'd take minutes, even the man said we all arrived, this happened, uh, food was served, we all left. I mean, we may not had any group discussion. Um, is there a third option to say this was an inadvertent violation? And um, maybe this is an inadvertent violation, but it was on the borderline. And, you know, we'll uh, try to avoid this stuff in the future. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like a, a soft one. Not that the, the, the league mentioned to me, it's either one way or okay. the other. Okay. Can Steve wants to say his piece, if that's okay? If nobody else in the board has a question about the two choices first. Okay, uh, Kim. Well, I don't think it was a violation of the meeting. I think it was a social engagement. And frankly, as I've written you, it was impossible to have discussion about much of anything. The acoustics were so bad and it was billed as a social meeting to get acquainted with our uh, Televate people, and I think that's what it was. So I don't okay. think it's a, I don't think it was a violation. All right. If you would remute yourself, anyone else? Uh, Doug? I tend, I tend to agree. Uh, it was a social gathering as allowed by Vermont statutes annotated regarding open meeting law. Uh, you could hardly hear yourself think. So I don't know how you expect anybody to engage in any conversation. And um, I think Mr. Whitaker's comments that people were discussing things is a little bit far-fetched because who, who did he hear talking about anything? So I, I'm, I'm not at all inclined to go along with acknowledging that we violated in any open meeting law. Okay. Um, Sally and Will, I know you weren't there. I don't know what your feelings are about it, but you still can have an opinion. Yeah, I mean, I had training that night, but I, I mean, you guys are all saying that there wasn't even a chance to talk because of the noise there. I would go with the, the social gathering. Well, we talked to our immediate neighbors, but I'll right, tell you, but... Kim was two people away from me and I couldn't hear him. And Doug was way at the other end of the table. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Will, do you have any? So I, I guess, uh, again, I would have to uh, agree. Um, with what Sally said, I mean, I, I wasn't there, but I've been to Sarducci's a bunch of times. I have no idea how you could have a meeting in that place at all. Um, the food is fantastic, but uh, to have a conversation is impossible. Okay, we're going to let Steve talk and then I'll entertain a motion. The board needs to make a motion to make this official statement of how they felt this violation is being treated. Uh, Stephen? Uh, yeah, a number of folks who were there, uh, I point out that this was scheduled, the Sarducci's was scheduled for Tuesday night, and it was warned 
uh, I, or people were notified that it was happening. And then it was moved without notice to those same people who were notified. So you moved it to the Monday night. And numerous people who were there said they were talking about technology issues, which will are likely to come before the board. So the fact that it was a challenge to hear does not eliminate the fact that people were talking business, admittedly, we're talking business that is likely to come before the board. The technology, the redundancy, the resiliency, the radio antennas, the towers, et cetera, people were mining the consultant's brain and talking amongst themselves. So there's no way to minimize this, you know? It's, it's, it's egregious that you're even trying. Okay, thank you. Uh, entertain a motion that in treatment of the, the uh, um, filed violation of the May 17th meeting, the board has decided, and then I would just quote that whole big piece in the minutes as a motion, that the meeting shall not mean the occasion when blah, blah, blah. And that we're treating this gathering like a conference. I think in my notice, it was actually said it's like a workshop. Um, would, would somebody make a motion like that? Or you have another motion you want to make? Go ahead. Well, maybe this is one, maybe. Uh, yeah, you're muted. It's hard. Yeah, I'm looking for words that uh, would uh, deny. Oh, okay. We can just say, okay. Deny the violation, open meeting law violation of May 17th gathering at who? Sarducci's. Okay, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Kim. Kim, second. Board, further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Wave your hand aye. or yes. Just going to abstain. Any opposed? Donna. Just abstain. Okay. All right. I'll write that up. Uh, in the minutes as well as an official email to Stephen. What was the vote? <laughs> the vote was all in favor except one abstention. Okay. Uh, Doug. For the, for the minutes, if I might, uh, I'd like to say that it was an opportunity for me and I would hope the rest of the board to uh, learn about this aspect of the open meeting law. Um, uh, for Stephen's edification, the movement from Capitol Plaza to Sarducci's was because Capitol Plaza was closed and not open when it was originally scheduled to be there. So we had no choice but to find another location, which did occur. Uh, it came at very short notice to anybody that was attending. Um, I think as a board, should we ever be lucky enough to be in a position where we get a chance to go out on a social event that we talk a couple of people to not go so that we don't have a board issue. Um, and if we need to have somebody take minutes while they're trying to get their spaghetti down, then okay. But along with all these things, there's got to be an intent. And I'm sure that nobody that attended there intended to violate any open meeting law. OK. Any other comments? All right. The next issue, um, actually, uh, on, on mine, um, there was um, the open, the verbal complaint, which I now have an email complaint about uh, December 9th city hall back door not unlocked. 
I was right there. I heard Steve as soon as he knocked. I stayed at that door back and forth from 6.15 till quarter till seven until five minutes till I came back in and got online and let the board know I was going back out to the door because Stephen hadn't come yet. And I sure he was. And literally, I'm talking to them when you started knocking and I left immediately and went to the door. The city has a problem with the door. It's changed and added a tie to the back that's loose enough that you can pull it around to jam the handle. Um, but it, it happened. It's out of our control and we tried. I tried to deal with it efficiently. But anyone who knocked was easily heard and the door was unlocked. So I do not feel this was a violation. Any other board comments? Donna, the problem is. If you've complete. unmuted, would you like to talk? Yeah. But, oh, no. I understand the problem's been resolved now. There's a way to keep the door open. Well, and it's not a problem when the city remembers you have a meeting <laughs> because then yeah. the auto lock hasn't happened. But once the auto lock happens, <clears throat> then the key only works to let you in, not to really unlock the door permanently. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a $10,000 aspect in our upcoming budget. Uh, anyone else comment? Steve, you have the complaint? You want to have a comment? Yeah, that's not all that's in the complaint. Did you share the complaint with the whole board? Um, and you've had it for over a week. Oh, Steve, you've kept me so busy. I am beyond myself. I have a life and commitments. Um, so why don't you just state it for right now? Because I'm, I can't find it. I've got my email so jammed up with your stuff. Well, uh, then you'll I'm have sorry. to table it till the next meeting because I didn't bring a copy with me. I presumed that you had shared it with the board ahead of time. It includes the lack of access to the speakers, which Cameron had oh. made available to you. Okay, uh, no, no, that's not a violation. Sorry, we, we've gone over the sound thing before. It's not your discretion to just say yeah. something's not a violation. It's up to the board to discuss the issues. You're absolutely Including correct. the locked door. Uh, absolutely. It's illegal to hold a meeting with a locked door. Okay, so you'd like a motion from the board. Okay, uh, we can go back to the unlocked door. We've entertained a motion that the, whether the, which I asked if the board saw the unlocked door as a violation or not. I heard no, but it would be good to entertain a motion to address the complaint. Entertain a motion that- I haven't seen the complaint. Does, does board, anyone know if, I'm sorry, Donna. Yep. I, I shouldn't ask this because it's so ignorant, but does anyone know if um, open meeting violations require intent? Like if there has to be an intent to do it or whether it's just a strict liability thing? Can no, if you, this question. there's some things like we did, we, um, a posting got missed by the, by the city. Uh, I sent them, I sent it to them in a timely way, but staff confusion, it didn't get posted in the hallway. That was an inadvertent error. The, the intention was to get it done. It didn't happen. So our cure was, I actually got John Odom to commit that I sent it to him instead of another person. And he has a commitment to post it. And then when I miss him, I post it myself on the hard cardboard outside of his box, which happened recently. He was gone. Everybody was gone. Nobody had a key to the, the glass box. So I put it on the other bulletin board. So that was our cure. And um, likewise, if indeed the board decided that was a violation, then the cure was what I did, which talked to the city and let them make sure that when we're on the schedule, the door gets unlocked. And if not, put a tie, a cable tie on there that will fit around so it will hold the latch. And they did that. So the board can decide if it was an inadvertent error and then it has been resolved, or they can decide they don't think it was an error. So what is the board's pleasure? Inadvertent error or wasn't a violation? Justice. I don't think it's a violation. Um, I don't think it. there's any intent here. You either violate the law or you don't. On the other hand, um, I think this is a problem that's, again, growing pains with the pandemic. 
And it took a while to figure out how to run these meetings. And I don't think it's a violation. You're talking about the unlocked door right now. Yeah. City Hall's unlocked door. Yes. Okay. So Sally, you want to make a motion? Then we'll see if that passes. I, I'm not clear about the consensus of the board. Um, I'll make a motion that the door was not a violation um, of the open meeting law, that someone was taking care of it. It was a mechanical issue that happened and those things happen. Okay, I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna ask Sally to add the date that the city hall unlocked door on December 9th. Okay, you can add the December 9th to meeting to that. Okay, motion. it was, was not a violation. It was a mechanical issue. I would appreciate it if you would say, and someone was there to let people in. And and you were there to let people in. Yeah, I, I, I'm i not sure what the issue is. I Did you hear from a lot of people that they couldn't get in? Nope. Okay. And let me tell you, I heard Stephen. I'll second that motion. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion by the board on the violation? Sally's motion is that it was not a violation. It was a mechanical issue and a person was available to open the door. Any further comments? Any other board comment? I'm sorry, Steve, you did yours. Now the board has a motion and they're gonna vote on no, it. No, you, you're misinforming the board. I, I made an offer to put a cone in the door and keep it unlocked. And you rejected that offer and insisted that the door be locked. Uh, that is a order, violation. Stephen. Stephen, I actually put lots of things in front of that door and that door pushed them right out. I put a <laughs> and cone it was 18 in there that degrees out, Stephen, out. if you want to get into all the arguments, but you're, you're out of order, I'm probably out of order. So we have a motion Lord. seconded. Is the board in favor? All in favor, aye. I all opposed any opposed okay uh, i just want to clarify my vote i think it sure. was from a hyper technical legal reading probably a violation of open meeting law i also think it's um not a big deal and i think donna did everything she could to remedy it but my opinion is that i think it is a violation of the open meeting law um and then i did talk to remedy. To the league about it too. I mean, it was fine if it was going to be an invert error, we'll just cure it. But they said they didn't feel it was an error because we could respond to anyone coming to the door. Okay. Oh no, I guess I mean the moment that while it was locked, I would say is the uh, the violation. Absolutely. I think if if one could easily respond and guarantee that they can answer it, I think that the uh, I think it's fine. I think the remedy and the cure that you came up with is good. But um, anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Oh, well, all right. All in favor of the motion say aye or wave. Any opposed? Any abstentions? You're going to abstain again. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, the other piece of that was <clears throat> we've gone through the open meeting law, and the law requires that the public have auditory availability to all remote meetings. And that we have provided. Stephen has requested that we use the city's laptop speakers <clears throat> to have it on the screen and that we then would avail ourselves of the city council. Well, one, the city council room is not always available. And two, every time Stephen and I have been in the city council on remote meetings, he does not leave their equipment alone. In fact, he has received a letter with warnings from the city to say that he has recently, was dated October 13th, that to do address his behavior during these meetings and process, we've observed you becoming increasingly disruptive and verbally aggressive. Your recent action of slamming the city laptop closed during a public meeting very much crossed the line. You've been asked on multiple occasions to refrain from touching city equipment unless requested to do so. When we were there, he kept touching the screens, um, the laptop and the speakers, and hence we had speaker trouble. 
I didn't want to have to control Steve or anyone else or fuss with any equipment at the remote meeting. Now, if indeed sometimes the council room is available and Justin or someone else wants to get trained on it and wants to be responsible to not only manage it, but keep Steve away from it, then fine. I was not willing to take on that responsibility. Stephen didn't like the answer. So then he went to the city council and said, will you train somebody? Will you let the public safety authority use your equipment? And of course they said they would, they would train us, but I'm not willing given the, the issue of this warning letter from the city to Stephen, as well as behavior I've witnessed to be responsible for it. I don't feel this is a violation. We're meeting the law with auditory, that's where I stand. What's the board's pleasure? Do you want to make access to city equipment? Uh, Doug. Uh, no, I don't want to get into the get into the equipment uh, issues and everything else. If you start fooling around with it, you accept responsibility for it. And I'm not sure how much money is in that room, but I suspect a fair amount. So let's, if it works, fine. If it doesn't work and there's a way that we're meeting the rule of the law, then let's do that and let's move on. I'm not sure that this is a violation at all. The rest would, of the board, okay. Are you making a motion? Does it need a motion? Yes. The board needs to address all the complaints of violations. I move that the board uh, does not find that any violation occurred. Uh, the denial of using city equipment. I need a little more context in there. Yeah. Deny that any violation occurred by not using city Maybe I should say unwillingness. Um, you tell me. It's, it's about my or us representing CVTA right now, whether or not whoever the in-person is in the remote setting, whether we want them to use city equipment and whether in the past we violated because we weren't willing to use city equipment. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time coming up with words. I, I don't know how we can do a motion that covers that that way, Don. Yeah. Um, what, what, well, what if what if it said, and let me just start it, and then you can see if it's comfortable uh, that the that the board does not see a violation of open meeting law by only using auditory equipment. Well, it isn't part of Steve's problem. Is and, and doesn't wish to be liable for city visual equipment when it's available. It's not always available. Like tonight, there was another meeting in the other room. So what I wrote down, Doug, you can please change it, um, is the, the the Public Safety Authority Board does not see a violation of the open meeting law by only using auditory equipment and does not want to be liable for the city's laptop and screen, laptop so, equipment. So moved. Anybody want to second that? I will. Okay, Sally, second. Comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, thank you. And Donna, I'm happy to try to get this set up in the future. I'm happy to be here in person and, and to do the setup, if that's something okay. we want to do. Okay, but we are assigned a memorial room. That's where the space we have reserved. Yeah, we've got a tea. We have a little something in here right now. Sorry, I don't know if that would work. But, uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you have if I to, can figure it out, I'll figure it out. What, but you'll have to see Cameron and get trained and get permission. But that'd be great. Yeah, of course. That'd be great, Justin. 
if, yep. if you want to do it and if the board feels whatever liability you have they want to they want to take on and make sure make sure you present your certificate of, of achievement on <laughs> yeah you got it you got it <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Um, I think that that's all I remember from the two. Uh, otherwise, if there's more, uh, I'll send it out to you. The uh, other business, uh, Kim wanted to talk about term of office. I did send the board the facts of term of office. I must say I was a little... I was very surprised that last meeting, the board never asked me for any dates. It took me a long time to figure out the real discussion was about me and not just the charter term of office understanding. Um, but since then, both Kim and Stephen have sent emails saying, forget it, forget it. But the fact of it is they took up a lot of time last meeting. So I like to make sure the board feels okay about my terms of office as well as any ruling about partial and full terms of office. Any discussion from the board? Well, I'll just make a motion that the, um, the action at the last board meeting to have a legal opinion on term limits uh, be rescinded. I think okay. my reason for that is Stephen actually did a very good job in finding out when terms started. And it took a lot of work looking up minutes and going through the whole thing. It wasn't simple, but once we got it all done, it seemed like there was no need for any further action. And that's the reason for my motion. Okay. I'll second it. And Sally seconded. So I just want to modify this that, so you're rescinding the request of a legal opinion on, you said term limits, but it's really on Donna's term limits that your question was about. Okay, I don't remember it specifically, but if that's what it said, yes, it should, your name can be included. Okay, uh, uh, okay I'll check. So. Um, the wording of that, you want it to be just the same as what was in the minutes. I'll have to yes. check that. Okay. okay. Uh, and that was your understanding, Sally, with your second. Yes. Okay. Further, any discussion on this? Doug. Uh, forget it. I was going to say something that was not important. Never mind. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay, it passes. Great. Um, that's 825, we're only 25 minutes over this time, not a full hour, folks. We're doing better. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all very much for your attention to these matters. And our next meeting is January 13th. And that is not a regular board meeting, as well as our public hearing related to the budget and the ballot item. I'll resend out the budget. I'll resend out the uh, draft warning. Anything else the board would like? Okay, thank you. We are adjourned by unanimous consent. And thank Merry you, Christmas. Justin, for being there. It was much better without a mask and all. Thank you. Thank you.